Howdy Internet, this is Goatface, and today's the big day! From my unique perspective, today's the day my LP of Bonzi Kong 3 goes live. Of course, from your marginally less unique perspective, we're a few episodes past that already. Time is confusing, and I hate it. At any rate, we're hosting a watch party a few floors below me, and I need refreshments. Lucky for us, Fabrosi knows the perfect place to score some relatively free drinks. Alcohol free, of course. Please don't call the cops. Hey, bartender! Aw, thanks! But I can't, sorry. I'm on the job. Just gonna reset that and we'll try it again. No, 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 that's quite alright. Though I am looking to score some for later if you make them to go. Oh, right. Payment. I don't suppose you'd take a trade. Let me see what we're working with. Aha! Cupid spin discs would be perfect for kicking out rowdy customers come last call. Oh, sure, I'll make the trade. Or, how about we play for them? My spin discs for your drinks. Winner takes all. You win. All right, bartender. Let's play. Bartender was a game created by Camco and released to arcades in the year 1983. In it, you are, get this, a bartender, and it's your job to serve thirsty customers delicious and refreshing drinks. Ports of Bartender to various arcades, computers, and consoles had different drink sponsors back in the day, with their logo plastered onto every available surface. Today's is... Beer. Ah yes, very specific. You have a handful of actions you can perform while playing the game. You can fill up a glass, slide it down the bar to a soon-to-be happy patron, and collect the empty mugs they send back. If you fail to serve a customer before they reach the end of the bar, or fail to catch a glass before it falls, you lose. It's pretty intense. The first level or two is no big deal, but after a while, guests stop being satiated by just one glass. Combine that with the number of patrons increasing with every level, and things can get tricky pretty quick. In stage one, you're serving cowboys. The pre-video game annals of history are fuzzy to me, admittedly, but cowboys in particular stick out in my mind as being extremely rad? Horseback riding across the Great Plains, protecting the innocent, wielding a sword in one hand and a shield in the other, slaying... You're thinking of the night. Cowboys army wants to fill the old fat cow that spit in cars. Ew, what, really? Yes. At any rate, despite what modern media may tell you about these rowdy cattle wranglers, they're actually the most forgiving customers of the bunch. They move slowly, and seem to be less thirsty than the people will come to meet later. Between levels, a mischievous bandit will shake a couple cans of pop, swap them around, and force you to choose one among them. If you happen to pick the one he hasn't tampered with, you get some bonus points, as well as a heartfelt, this one's for you. However, if you pick up one of the ones he shook, you... Ugh. Ugh. It tastes like... pixels. Speaking of taste, level 2 brings us to a football field. Of course, I have nothing but respect for people who play sports. After all, what are sports if not the most retro games of all? But sports fans... Well, there's certainly a step up in difficulty. Some patrons of your establishment will leave you tips on the counter. If you're feeling daring, you can run out across the bar and collect them. Do so with caution, however, as your movement in this game is frustratingly slow, and abandoning your post at the taps can allow patrons and their empty mugs to catch you unawares. As a counterbalance, if you do collect your tips, these three dancing ladies will grace your bar with their presence. The occasional patron will even stop to admire them, which makes your job easier. And hey, who can blame them? Just check out that choreography! Hey dog, serves up! Um... Patrons distracted by dancing ladies won't grab mugs you slide towards them. 
I'd say their loss, given that they're presumably paying for these things, but it's actually your loss, because if you send a mug to a customer who's not ready, you lose. Don't break the merchandise, I guess. The game's a fair bit repetitive, I'm sure you've noticed. The background may have swapped out, but the gameplay remains firmly the same. It's not bad, but I find the controls to be... sticky? Slippery? It's a bit hard to explain. Your character feels really... heavy. You have to exert a fair bit of force to get yourself moving, and even more force to turn yourself around. It takes a bit to get used to, and honestly, I'm not the biggest fan. Again, it's not bad, and I'm not just saying that because I once gave Bonzi Kong a less than perfect score and felt so bad about it that I refused to ever grade another game again. I mean it, it's a fine enough game. I wouldn't be playing it if I didn't enjoy it. I mean, who wants to see gamers play games they hate? What's the fun in watching someone get mad? Thanks, thank you, thank you game, appreciate it. Whew. Let's just move on to the next level, okay? Yeah, no thanks, kind of in a rush. And space? What? Space? We're in space! Why are we in space? Did you know we'd end up in space? Must be pretty good drinks if aliens are coming to get some. Here you go, by the way. I hope the CFIA doesn't mind me using the same glass over and over again. So, now that I think about it, we're probably out of the jurisdiction, eh? Sorry, bud, but if you don't plan on serving, somebody has to. Uh, so you want to play hardball, eh? No problem. I'm not afraid to mix things up. Get ready, Bart, because it's last call. Ugh, that's what we're serving to these people? Do we hate them? Why does it taste so bad? Well, folks, I suppose that's... Right, sorry. Are you okay? Yeah, I, I'm, I'm fine. What's, uh, is it on? Just ended. Perfect. It would save you the trouble of asking if you just watched it with us. I can't. Tube TV doesn't want me watching my own videos as they air. I could sneak a little extra ad revenue off the top if I did. But it's okay for us to watch it? In your house? On your TV? Yes. Now, what's the verdict? Nice! Anything catch your eye? You lost. Yeah. But aside from that? I like that you apologized to your subscribers at the beginning. That was thoughtful. Not the word I would use. Pointless is more apt. I would be as harsh, so I agree. If people continue to watch and subscribe, clearly made it by being paid. Oh, you saw that. Yeah, it was pretty hard to miss. Hmm, that's interesting. Out with it, Goat Faith. What do you know that we don't? Okay, well, the thing about that apology bit is... I never actually re-recorded it. What? I never meant for that to make it into the episode. Sure, it looks like I meant to put it in, but that's the point. Because I knew that if someone had been, say, secretly recording us and adding that footage onto my videos, that faking an, albeit sincere, apology and then pretending to forget to add it onto the episode would be the perfect way to check to see if they were still doing it. Oh my god. I'm afraid to ask what that means. Well, it leaves us with two options. 
One, we've been wrong about who was filming us, or... The cult of Gigabyte is still out there. Yeah, that's what I was worried it was. 